Investors piling into shares of movie uh, theater chain AMC, one of Wall Street's hottest stocks soaring over the past week, though, gave back some of those gains Friday. And this weekend's big box office could signal the start of a summer movie surge. Joining us right now to talk more about meme stocks and movies is Sylvia uh, Jablonski, uh, Chief Investment Officer and Co-Founder of Defiance ETFs, and Sarah Fisher is with us as well, Axios Media Reporter. Thank you to you both. I didn't go to the movies. Did you, by the way, did, any, did, did anybody here go to the movies? Nope. This weekend? Anybody? No, but I'd um, like to see but, a, a, a Quiet Place, too. Sylvia, you want to see a Quiet Place? Sylvia, you see a movie? I want to see it. I, I want to see it. But I didn't, you didn't go to the movies this weekend. But nobody went to the movies. Okay. <laughs> but somebody went to the movies because $58 million worth uh, went to see the movie that, that Becky wants to see. The question is, do you think that this summer is going to be this blockbuster summer? Um, and... Can you make any rationality of what's happened to AMC stock? You know, I, th I think that this summer will be a blockbuster summer in terms of good movies coming out and people getting back into the theaters. You know, Quiet Place 2, you mentioned they got 58 million higher than pre-pandemic levels. But I don't think it's necessarily going to save the stock. You know, I do think that the, the recent run in AMC is very much attributed to social media, to the Reddit community. You know, you have retail investors just looking at short squeezes and looking at you know, light floats out there and, and, and really going on this epic momentum run to drive the price up. So the fundamentals are a little bit divorced. But yeah, I mean, do I think that people will get back out to the movies and sort of help the case of companies like AMC keep them from bankruptcy? I do. Um, stellar returns? Probably not, unless it's these short term, you know, Reddit swings. Real quick, if, if Adam Aaron raised even more money, let's just say he just announced it out of the blue, would that be good for the stock? Would that be bad for the stock? Look, I, I think I think he's got to raise more money, right? I mean, they have 426 million of rent due in the next couple of years, four billion in debt. They've had negative cash flows for the last three years. You know, movie prices, ticket sales have been going down for about 19 years or so. But I think again, this stock is just so divorced from reality that if you get the Reddit community and you know social media, sort of the David versus Goliath, just really betting against the short squeeze on this and pushing it up. It might not matter. I mean, a lot of what's going on right now just doesn't matter in terms of debt issuance, fundamentals, the actual value of the stock itself. So it's sort of it's sort of its its own its own monster, I would say, in the market. So, Sarah, and there, there is a greater fool theory here going on, I, I have to imagine. But one of the things that's fascinating, I don't know if you've seen, is that Adam Aaron, the CEO of AMC, has now sort of taken to Twitter to I don't want to say to egg on the meme stock investors in his stock, but he's now speaking directly to them in a way that I have not seen other CEOs historically do. Obviously, the Elon Musk uh, of the, in the world do, but, but many CEOs historically have not sort of targeted and started to focus and speak to their investors like this. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a sign of desperation. This is not a crowd or a community that, you know, to Sylvia's point, is evaluating this stock based off of fundamentals. And so for him to even be addressing it, to me, doesn't make much sense. What Adam Aaron needs to be focusing on is getting his fundamentals in order, figuring out how he's going to one day, if he ever can, make revenue again. I mean, I don't expect that theater attendance is ever going to bounce back to pre-pandemic levels. So there needs to be a game plan, whether or not he's going to raise more cash, et cetera. And sort of stepping into the mean stock world, to me, feels like a huge distraction right now. Hey, Sylvia, if you, were, if you were Adam Aaron, what would you do right now? I give you the keys to the kingdom. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, I think, you know, I think I would try to focus on the fundamentals. I think I would try to focus on paying off the debt, try to get people back into the theater, you know, advertise the fact that social distancing, you know, cleaning of, of, of epic resorts is being done in the theaters every day, really advertising these, these hot movies like A Quiet Place 2 and trying to make the theater experience more interesting. But do you, you know, think perhaps people, with, and I, I'm curious to both, Sarah, I'll, I'll go to you on this. Do you think that people are not going to the movie theaters because they're scared of COVID? I think that that's probably, there's probably some fear of that. Or do we think that there's been a secular change that is forever and that people are going to want to watch movies at home and maybe they're going to go out to the movies once in a while as it's sort of a, a big on a big night that'd be like a big event but that it's not going to be the same thing ever again andrew the movie theater business has fundamentally changed because of the pandemic and it is never going back but there might be some people who are hesitant because of the coronavirus but most people are vaccinated at this point if people are choosing not to go to the theater I think it's a lot of them making the calculation that they can get a cheaper or a better or more convenient deal at home. 
even look at Cruella. I mean, Cruella was supposed to go toe-to-toe with A Quiet Place 2 this weekend at the box office, but it brought in less than half of the revenue. Why? Because a lot of people out there, I'm assuming, thought, hey, for 30 bucks, I can get my entire family to sit around on our couch at home and watch this. It makes perfect economic sense. And if you look at the way theater windows are shrinking, this is going to be the reality from now on. So do not expect pre-pandemic theater going levels to increase. The Sorkin family was one of those that shelled out the 30 bucks for Cruella. And (laughs) and it was worth it. It was worth it, Disney and uh, Mr. Chapek and Mr. Iger. It was worth it. Uh, Sarah and Sylvia, thank you. Appreciate it. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.